Have you ever thought that, when China's DF-41, DF-5C and other intercontinental missiles are pointing to faraway places like Sharp Spears, who is going to be the firm shield guarding this land? On September 3, 2025, in the grand parade commemorating the 80th anniversary of the victory of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression and the World Anti-Fascist War, the answer to this question was slowly unveiled. It is, is not a single weapon, but a system, a multi-layer air defense and anti-missile system that integrates cutting-edge technology and strategic wisdom. The most notable of these is undoubtedly the first public unveiling of the HQ-29 air defense missile system which is not only capable of intercepting incoming intercontinental missiles, but can even reach into space with the ability to combat low-orbit satellites and become the thickest and most advanced shield in China's strategic defense system. The parade demonstrated China's land-based nuclear forces, such as DF-61, DF-31BJ, and DF-5C intercontinental missiles, as well as the well-known DF-41, DF-31AG and DF-5B which together build a powerful long-range nuclear strike capability, reflecting the strategic idea of nuclear and normal preparedness and all-area deterrence. However, the modern strategic balance requires not only an invulnerable spear, but also an impregnable shield. The Red Flag series of air defense missiles were unveiled in the parade in a systematic way, forming a multi-layered interception network combining long-range, medium-range, high-medium and low-altitude with HQ-9C, HQ-19 and HQ-29, assuming different levels of defense tasks. HQ-29, in particular, with its huge launch box size and two-unit configuration per vehicle, hints at its large size and powerful propulsion capability. Designed to intercept outside the atmosphere the deadliest threat flying in the mid-range, intercontinental ballistic missiles. It fills a critical gap in China's strategic mid-course ABM capability making it a strategic asset comparable to the U.S. land-based mid-course defense system and Russia's neuter ABM system. Mid-range ABM is the most difficult area of missile interception technology, as its interception occurs during the mid-flight phase of a missile, i.e., when the missile flies out of the atmosphere and then undergoes a near-uniform motion in outer space. This is like hitting another high-speed bullet, precisely with a bullet hundreds of kilometers away in space and its technical complexity can be imagined. It relies not only on the interceptor itself, but also on a large and sophisticated system of support, a constellation of space-based infrared early warning satellites, long-range early warning radars, high-performance computing centers, and rapid response command and control systems. The HQ-29 and its predecessor, the HQ-19, have undoubtedly contributed to the 100% success rate of China's previous land-based mid-course ABM technology tests, and the HQ-29's mobility and deployment capabilities have further enhanced its survivability, allowing it to flexibly change positions and avoid being destroyed in the first wave of an adversary's first strike. In addition to intercepting ICBMs, the HQ-29 is also capable of intercepting ICBMs. In addition to intercepting ICBMs, HQ-29's other strategic capability, anti-satellite, should not be underestimated. Its intercept altitude is speculated to exceed 500 kilometers, which enables it to threaten reconnaissance, navigation, and communication satellites operating in low Earth orbit. In modern warfare, space assets have become the eyes and ears of military operations, and depriving the other side of their space sensibility is tantamount to making them blind and deaf. Of course, HQ-29 is not alone. Together with the HQ-19 and HQ-9 series, it weaves a tight multi-layer interception net. In the ideal defense scenario, HQ-29, as the highest level of shield, will be the first to try to kill the incoming warheads in outer space. If there is a leakage of fish ray entry into the atmosphere, it will be handed over to the HQ-19 for the second intercept finally. Systems such as the HQ-9C are responsible for clearing the airspace. Finally, Systems such as the HQ-9C are responsible for clearing threats that break into lower altitudes. This layered defense concept greatly improves the overall probability of interception and ensures the absolute security of the core of the country. The simultaneous public display of the HQ-11, HQ-20, and HQ-22 systems at the parade also demonstrates that China is building an unprecedentedly complete and coordinated integrated air defense and anti-missile system. The strategic significance of the HQ-29 goes far beyond purely military technology and has a profound impact on geopolitics and the strategic balance of powers. It means that China has made remarkable achievements in the development of both spear and shield technologies, 
and possesses a more balanced strategic deterrence and defense capability throughout the development of China's air defense and anti-missile system from HQ-9 to HQ-19 and now HQ-29 clearly shows a small steps and fast running development path of solving the problem of availability, catching up with the performance and seeking a local lead. HQ-29 is not only a successful display of weapons and equipment, but also a powerful declaration of strategic discourse. It proves to the world that China has the wisdom and ability to develop the world's top defense weapon system and unswervingly defend its peace and development. As military experts have pointed out, this complete anti-missile system makes China one of the few countries with such capabilities, enhancing its defense and deterrence capabilities while maintaining a defensive nuclear posture. Delving deeper into the technical aspects, the success of the HQ-29 is no accident. It represents a breakthrough achievement for China in several cutting-edge technology areas. The first is kinetic kill technology, which is the core of mid-course of BM the HQ-29's interceptor must be able to collide with and destroy incoming warheads traveling at several kilometers per second with extremely high precision outside the atmosphere hundreds of kilometers away by relying on its own small attitude control engine. This kind of collision killing has reached the extreme requirements of guidance accuracy, target identification and attitude control. China has proved that it has fully mastered and operationalized this technology through many successful land-based mid-range anti-missile tests. The second is the integration of the accusation system and the sensor network. HQ-29 cannot be successfully intercepted without the support of the eye in the sky. China has already established an early warning constellation consisting of satellites such as the Gaofen series and the remote sensing series, which is capable of providing early warning of missile launches on a global scale. On the ground, Large phased array early warning radars deployed at strategic locations can accurately track and identify targets. The data acquired by these sensors are transmitted in real time to the anti-missile command center through a high-speed data chain, which is quickly solved by a supercomputer to form a fire control command, and then given to the HQ-29 launch unit. The whole process must be completed in a very short period of time. The response speed of the system and anti-jamming ability puts forward very high requirements. Furthermore, HQ-29's ability to counter surprise defense Modern ballistic missiles, especially intercontinental missiles, are commonly equipped with a variety of decoys, foils, jammers and other breakout devices to try to deceive the interceptor system. HQ-29 interceptors must be able to accurately identify the real nuclear warheads in the complex background of false targets. This requires extremely advanced multi-mode guides and intelligent recognition algorithms. China's advances in artificial intelligence and target recognition have provided the HQ-29 with a powerful brain. It is worth noting that the way the HQ-29 is deployed also reflects the maturity of China's strategic defense thinking. It is likely to use a combination of fixed silos and mobile launches. Fixed positions may be selected in deep areas such as the northwest to provide longer warning and tracking time for interception. At the same time, its road mobility ensures secondary counterattack capability and survivability. This flexible deployment makes it difficult for adversaries to completely destroy China's anti-missile barrier in the first wave of strikes. Looking ahead, HQ-29 is not an end point, but a new starting point. In the face of new types of threats, such as increasingly developed hypersonic glide vehicles, China's ABM technology is bound to continue to evolve. The future may see next-generation interceptors with higher interception speeds, greater maneuverability, and smarter recognition algorithms. At the same time, as new concepts of weapon technology, such as laser weapons and electromagnetic cannons, mature, they may also be integrated into China's multi-layered anti-missile system, complementing kinetic interceptors such as the HQ-29 and building a more three-dimensional efficient and low-cost homeland defense system.